Hello again, and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And I think I almost froze my ear off crossing the street just now. It is so cold on Elm Street today. Oh my goodness. I woke up around 5, uh-huh. and it was... 12 Fahrenheit. Oh, and then without I, the wind. Yeah, uh, yes, without the wind. And also from 5 to 7, because it always gets a yeah, little colder, colder before yeah. sunrise. So it was down to 9. Yeah. It's windy. It's and cold. Well, when I woke up, Google said I think it was 8 degrees outside. And they said with the wind chill, it felt like negative 13. And I was like, I think it really did because my ear, like. I, I can I, firmly I, attest that the wind chill it's chilly. It's freaking chilly. <laughs> but I brushed it's supposed my to be hair like 50 degrees tomorrow, again tomorrow. Right. Right. So. At least, it, knock on wood, at least we're not having a blizzard or something. No, but you know what I also wonder is, are you reading anything about all this be, uh, weather modification that's happening? Uh, that people, you know, for, for years people said all the people who thought that that was something that was going on, they were like, oh, you're bananas, you're crazy, it's conspiracy theories. Um, but I recall actually hearing an NPR thing years ago. I was driving up to Concord, I think, and someone said, um, oh, these professors from Harvard who are like spraying barium into the, the, the atmosphere because they're trying to reverse global warming. And then literally this week I read something in Nature magazine. Um, I did not like go and do a deep dive on this. So, you know, <laughs> this take it for what it is. Right? That's like- you know, this is some, some article on the internet. So take it for what it is. But I do know that there is weather modification happening. And apparently China is like really into it now. So basically there are these control freaks who think that, that if we control. spray certain things into, into the, the atmo- certain layer of the atmosphere, this doesn't sound, I, 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 but, I but know this is really happening. Yes, right? I was going to say, I've, I re- this and, sounds vaguely familiar. And, and, and the idea is much like when they've had giant volcanoes explode, yes. right? We know that uh, way back when the dinosaurs died, right? That was because, well, an asteroid hit, there was this giant cloud, it, uh, you know, ups, uh, stopped the sun, whatever, right? Fine, fine, fine. So now they're basically trying to try to take that theory um, and the science that they learned from Pompeii and some yeah. other Mount Helena, um, So they're like, oh, well, you know, if we put something in the atmosphere, we can reflect stuff and we can stop global warming. And I'm like, who's who's checking if we are going to, you know, put in an ice age or something? Because I am in the camp where I'm like, one or two degrees warmer, I think we as a species can deal with. But an ice age, that's where people mm, die. Yeah. (laughs) It it is interesting because then you try to think, you're like, is it different? Has it changed? I do remember it being really, really hot as a kid, but I don't know if we always had air conditioning. Like, is it because everything was in air condition, so everything seemed really, really hot? Right. Um, I also grew up in upstate New York, and even though it's on the same, like, parallel, the humidity over there is insane. I'm, New Hampshire has no idea what humidity is. You know, is. I have to say, I don't know, I'm struck every time I go out. I love going and walking in the snow, especially after some fresh snow. Mm. And being a child from Africa, you know, so I'm still, like, super excited about snow for the most part. But, you know, I'll walk in the woods, and it's just crazy to me that you're, like, crunching around yeah. on frozen ice, yeah. you know? And I think I'm thinking about it this way because of... Mars yeah. and the Mars rover and just getting those pictures yeah. back and being like the marvel of mankind. Yes. I mean, we are going to Mars. We are getting <laughs> pictures back from that was Mars. Amazing. How cool Dan and I, is Dan, that? Every time when they got the video, Dan's like, okay, come sit down. And he started playing. Right? It was very, it really, I, I mean, mean, it is a big deal. Like I, I am very glad that we um, are taking space exploration serious because it does a lot for science here on Earth. We discover lots of things in space that we then translate into technology here on Earth. But it is absolutely, it was amazing to watch, to watch in color the footage of this deployment of right. this rover and then the land, and it just, I, every time I watch a SpaceX launch on TV and I, they're showing the camera from within, showing the, the flames lighting, yep. I, thought, I, I think kids, 
like I think back to the green. I mean, it's like space it's, age, right? Like we grew up with, with Star Trek, right. and it was like and that was whoa, like whoa, crazy. And now it's like, like real. it's real. It's awesome. And I was watching a um, just a hour long documentary on Elon Musk because I'm trying to manifest him into my life so that we can get him to Pork Fest, the 18th annual Porcupine Freedom Festival, taking place in June. People can buy their tickets <laughs> at porkfest.com with a C. But um, you know, they they reshowed in this. I mean, it was like an hour, hour, 10 yeah. minute documentary about his life. And, you know, because he's also from South yeah. Africa, you know, we, we share similarities in our story. But they re-showed that one where the missile goes up and then it comes back. And everyone said he was crazy. Yeah. Um, that he was going to, you know, his whole thing was like, what is this thing about the government that are all like, yeah, we send up a rocket and then we just like destroy it. Can you yeah. imagine if every time we took an airplane? Yeah, we just we're like, away. oh, we'll fly from here to Bangkok and then we'll just destroy the airplane. That seems bananas. And it was bananas and only the state would do something like that because if you have unlimited resources, maybe right. you don't care about you the bottom line, You don't have to, there's no right? incentive. So exactly, so and incentives matter as we talk about a lot on this show. And so he, uh, you know, he had said to everyone, I'm gonna build this thing, it's gonna be a rocket ship, it's gonna go up and it's gonna <laughs> come back to earth and I'm gonna land it on this pocket-sized little thing yeah. in the ocean. And everyone was like, sure, you're, you're nuts. Hmm. And he did it. And he did it. And you know, Louis was in and out of the kitchen as I was watching this. And I said, you know, when I saw that on YouTube, when I saw that original clip yeah. of the missile coming, the rocket coming back down, I actually cried. Yeah, because it's was amazing. Like, wow! Like, although I think cool one missed that? the other day. Although that might have been, they, there's the SN9. There's the one that. They, they go up and then they have it and it comes down. I don't really know, right? They're trying to land well, these you other know, things. But it was miss. funny You're because you, you, thing, you, watch you, it, know? you watch it and then there was like this steam over here and you're like, that's the ocean. <laughs> that one missed. <laughs> but it is still, it's absolutely amazing. The footage from Mars but was absolutely amazing. That is also the thing that people have to understand. You know, I think we were talking before the show about this sort of culture of safetyism and how everyone, I think, we have created a world where people fear risk because they Every fear risk. failure. And the point is, you can't get from here to there if you're not willing to make a lot of mistakes along the line. Yep. And I think folks back home need to really start yep. to embrace that. You know yep. what? Life and is it, full it, of it hits and misses. Have to be but you got heavy swing, things right? like you know. You see people say, "Oh, I wish I knew how to paint." You know, like paint, paint. So just try painting. I love to paint. I'm not very good, well, but you know, know, right? You're still enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, because it's so. Here's the other thing. I think that we've lost this sort of notion of hobbies and yep. just doing things for the hell of yep. it, right? And one of my whole things is let's encourage people to start to actually find the things they're passionate about. Yep. I think we. Partly because, of course, of our education yep. system, you know, where it was, you know, we, we for the past 150 years have basically created schools that are supposed to create good factory workers. Yep. That's what schools were designed to do. They were designed to create obedient people who will follow orders and do the widgets, you know, make, right. make you know, the screw widgets, the whatever. toothpaste lid on the toothpaste right. thing, you know, um, Charlie, Charlie and the Chocolate Factories. <laughs> Grandpa, dad, uh. I don't know. Anyway, right? And so it's it's let's get away from that. Yeah. Let's get back to experimenting Creativity and, and and you know because I think the more we foster mm. our own creativity, the faster we can heal the world. And yeah. face it, guys, we need some healing. Um, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I know at the end of the show you want to talk about some uh, right to know bills that are coming up. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about house session from last week <laughs> um that was creative that was very way. creative so <laughs> as you know i've served in the state house twice so you know there's there's first of all there's mason's rules which are a set of rules that you go by and then there's house rules which are things that, that are in mason's and these are the rules that we live by when you're a legislator and that that's what the way it works um I really, 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 really think we need to get back to normal and back to the state house and back to decorum and back to some sort of normalcy when it comes to our legislature because- Well, and life in general, yeah, period. But it's, it's, it's bizarre to watch because I think part of it is, you know, 
you might act a little differently when you're on a soccer field than you would if you were sitting in your seat at the in reps hall. But um, last the loud whistles. Uh, oh my know, god, the, it was crazy to watch. So one of the things I heard was that you know we talked about this last week. So just to set it up, right? So it's just like Huge. massive, like massive Sports building complex, right. in in Bedford. They were all ten feet apart, and they were uh, t was it ten or twelve? Well, I think I think the ones um, we give them an inch, it, and they I'm gonna go with. Literally I take heard a 12, mile. but let's say 10, 10 okay. feet apart. Still, Literally, I mean, front and back, you are no closer than 10 feet to the next person. But one of the things, and we had mentioned that, you know, when the that they had two doors, the Democrats were coming in one side, the Republicans were coming in one side. I mean, all of that, frankly, seems strange to me, but whatever, we're trying to accommodate people. But apparently the acoustics was terrible. in the place meant that if you were in the middle and Tammy was speaking, it would bounce. So the sound would come from here. So the guy who's like supposed to be in he's charge, like, where knowing, are you? So he'd be like, he hears it from here. He he looks over there. He's like, there's no one there. I have no idea what's going on. Would overrule. Then everyone this Squ side would be screaming. like, ah, and it's so <laughs> I'm just like what? it was. It was. It, I mean, and some of that I do think is a little drama laden. I do <laughs> think that um, the Democrats don't like being in the minority, and I can't blame them. Um, they don't like like um, somebody. No said, one likes it. There's legislation legislation being passed that they didn't like there was legislation passed to, in the last term that republicans didn't like and this is how the system this is how our system works um bringing it closer to home um i've got a picture here i don't know how this will work this is nicole klein knight oh this is the lady who says no one knows how to fry an egg in manchester something like that she represents ward four so she's an elected representative that is the outfit that she thought was she should that, wear that, that's like that a death plague mask yeah. from the, um, the 1700s so i thought that was what a little out of line i think that's you know like we're losing our decorum we're losing the fact that we are that these are elected representatives representing their constituents passing laws they could take it a little tiny bit more serious um interesting also is talking about the 10 foot distance and you know there was definitely 10 foot social distancing the democrats that anybody who wanted to wear a mask could wear a mask peculiar that there are many people wearing two masks because they read that article and now they want to do that but you, there was knock on wood there is no way you were catching covid at this scenario and all the uh republicans that d either couldn't wear masks for medical reasons or didn't want they were in a completely different section over there they were also like 10 or 15 feet apart it was crazy but the irony of it all because the same exact people who sued the state were there you know some of the ones who said they were too sick to attend which there still were uh ken snow wasn't there um What's her name? Diane Langley from Manchester wasn't there. Uh, Constant Van, Connie Van Houten wasn't there. So three out of the 33 reps from Manchester didn't attend. Um, but the same people who are like, oh my God, you're gonna kill us. This is a spreader event. Take a look at these pictures because that's not social distancing. Mm -hmm. And that's Nicole Klein Knight from Manchester. Uh, the next one, is that's not social distancing again that's our representative from ward four and i think that might be one of our representatives behind them from manchester and then that definitely is not social distancing um and then just for lightness there's the lovely picture of there's a person picture of somebody dead asleep completely dead asleep <laughs> i don't know who this person's representing but they're not paying attention um <laughs> So there, we have issues. And I, what ended up happening, and to summarize the, the chaos, so we had a two-day session, um, Wednesday and Thursday, and there's a calendar, and there were two parts to the calendar. And some may have interpreted that that meant part one was for Wednesday and part one was for Tuesday, when in reality, part one were all the bills that had to be referred to a second committee so they could get them off to the second committee. And the second part was all the bills that didn't require a second committee. So they whittled, they had the limited time at the sportsplex. They had till six o'clock on Wednesday and they only had till two on, um, on Thursday. And the speaker very clearly said, you know, we have to keep moving. We have to get the work done. And um, there were quite a, few quite a few times when the Democrats took it upon themselves to delay voting, which is, wasn't, isn't going to do any good because you're not going to make the votes not happen. You're just delaying. And just to set it up for folks back home, this is literally where I've been to these kinds of meetings where it takes two hours, hours. 
to go through the motion to be like, can we can, can we, we do can away with this one step so things can go right, faster? You just gone, and, then, right. and it's just like, yeah. ah, it's so like government. It, you know, got, it got towards in like 4.30, 5 o'clock on Wednesday, um, and they had completed the first part of the calendar, and now they were moving on to the second part of the calendar. And uh, Representative Osborne, who's the, the Republican majority leader, got up and moved to um, special order a bill to next, which happens all the time. You special order bills to a future date because maybe the rep that needs to speak about it isn't there. Sometimes they move bills ahead. It's not uncommon. It happens all the time. Um, he's special ordered, uh, I think it was House Bill 233, which um, basically said if a child is born alive, there is obligation to keep them alive. You, if a, so the crux of it is if a child's born during an abortion and is born live, there must be effort to keep the child alive. You can, I mean, you, whether you, uh, it seems common sense to me. Like, I didn't know we weren't trying to keep humans alive, but whatever. So he special ordered it to I next. don't know, maybe if the baby had a mask on, people would care. <laughs> so the Democrats were outraged that they had special ordered what they believed was going to be on Thursday to then. And I watched this. Dan said he could hear me laughing from upstairs because I was watching the minutiae. There were emotions, 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 emotions. And basically, Rennie Cushing, who's the Democrat uh, minority leader, got up and asked the question about, or maybe it wasn't him. Um, I think it was actually Rep. Herbert from Ward 4, uh, got up and asked the questions, what would happen if all the Democrats left and dropped the number below quorum? And it was clarified that if they drop below um, two-thirds of whatever that quorum number, all legislation to be passed would have to have a two thirds vote instead of a simple majority. And they went back and forth and again with the motions and the motions and I'm thinking, I thought you people didn't wanna be there. I thought you wanted to not be in the building and you're prolonging being in the building. And finally, uh, the mi Democrat minority leader Cushing said, the Democrats are, Mr. Speaker, the Democrats are gonna go home, we'll be back at nine o'clock in the morning and literally, Dozens, the majority, like almost all 150 or whatever it was that were present, stormed, like pushed their way past police. And while they're doing it, the speaker gavels and says, I order the um, sergeant at arms to lock the doors, which is also which sounds, normal. It sounds horrific. Sounds crazy, right? It's what, but it's I like, had no idea that stuff could be so fun at the state house, yes. right? So, so I was just, I didn't even watch it. I just watched people's comments on Facebook. Yep. You know, I'm friends with everyone. So like you can just yeah, you tell can just the story that, yeah. from, from everyone else's feeds. And I was like, wow. So they storm out because they don't want a quorum. Right. And then they lock the doors. And so, so people were on the outside. And then there were enough people on yes. the inside so, for the quorum. But the way it works is if you lock the doors, you don't get to Well, come and back that's the in. thing. So here's how it works. So literally, I mean, they don't literally, I don't think, lock the doors. They might. But you can't come, like, you can't leave. And this is a common practice. This is something. I mean, this has certainly this is happened and every happened year. in 2019. Every year because uh, the Democrats did it to the Republicans. Year. So the sad part here for me is kind of like this this vindictive, like, you did it, so I'm going to do it. So bad, <laughs> it, bad, 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 you know, it's instead just, of just been a uh, long time practice because you have to get things done. Right. And you can't, you can't have the legislature just walking out with things all undone. All the time, right? So, yeah. so they, lock, they lock the doors, right? Um, Nicole Klein tweeted that, like, oh, my God. You know, the speaker's breaking the law and unlawfully kidnapping people or something. And I'm like, okay, crazy lady. But that's beside the point. So now the first thing they always do after they do this is they do a quorum call because they need to find out how many people are in the house there. There were 218 people remaining, which kept them above the 50%, but below the two thirds requirements. So now all legislation that yes. would be passed would have to get two thirds vote. Apart. As you can imagine, of the 218, I think if there were 30 Democrats, no, there wasn't. There was maybe 20 some Democrats that didn't leave because they knew how this game plays. So you left, the, the Democrats chose to storm out and leave the Republicans to vote whatever they wanted on whatever they wanted. Needless to say, the bill that they were so outraged was being special ordered passed with no problems because there were still 190 some Republicans there. Um, oddly enough, when the Democrats that stormed out past, pushed their way past the state troopers and now we're on the outside looking in, realized like, wait, oh. we just screwed that up because now they can do whatever they want. Now they were like, we want in, we want in. And the speaker said, after we're done working on this bill because we're right. in the mo this mode. 
And he did. And they, um, by the time that all got done, it was almost six o'clock and they, they adjourned for the day. And that was that. But this is, this is how the rules work. And it's not, nobody was kidnapped. There were no unlawful acts. This is how it works. But then during all of this, prior to this, when they were delaying, I mean, there were, or maybe this was even, it was maybe on Wednesday. There was a bill that they didn't want the outcome. Like they just didn't want it. But you don't have a majority, so I'm sorry. That's not how math works. So then, they, <laughs> math is now racist. So then they I moved, heard this then morning. They moved <laughs> to lay the bill that they already voted on on the table. Well, you can't do that. Then they moved to indefinitely postpone, and then they moved to do this, and then they moved, and they were they were definitely being dilatory. They were definitely trying to delay. They were not doing the people's work. They were not representing their constituents well. Um, Again, the irony of the people who did not want to be in this building dragging things on because we don't have the votes, so I'm going to stomp my feet until I get the votes, even though math doesn't work that way. Um, yeah, so, yeah. We have a lot of um, colorful people. I watched a little bit of um, some testimony because I read some articles about um, some criminal justice bills yesterday and... You know, there's I'm, a lot of there's a lot of bad. I don't want to say bad actors. There's a lot of people who say stupid things on both sides of the party. One of which, when I see him, I will tell him that he should really rethink the th words that come out of his lips, <laughs> um, because it's not okay to say ignorant things to um, people testifying. So I want to make Just sure saying. we do cover the right to know bills. So there yes. are a couple of right to know bills that are coming up. Um, I believe on the fourth, which will be tomorrow or Thursday, th Thursday. and Friday. Um, right to Know supports both of these bills, and they're actually both in elections. So they're in the okay. election committee, and they have primarily to do with um, trying to fix this sort of election integrity thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I saw there was a three-hour video from Wyndham oh. uh, either that came out last night. I didn't have time to watch no, it, even though I'm up at the crack of dawn. I was just like, this is a lot. I hope someone edits it together or at least gives us like, like, Can I get the, the highlights of, of what is coming out of that. But for the folks who don't know, basically there was a voting discrepancy that came out during a recount in Wyndham, which is primarily a Republican district and a Democrat filed for a recount because she had lost by 20 some votes. Mm -hmm. And then um, when they were doing the recount, they found 300 uh, ish votes for every Republican candidate. And so the question became what happened, right? So we all know nationally, everyone's like, is there election fraud? Isn't there? Is it pervasive? Is it not pervasive? If it's not pervasive, but it exists, shouldn't we actually care about that anyway, right, right. right? Because it does mean fraud's happening and people are just saying, well, it's not bad enough yet. It's not yet, big fraud, right? it's just little fraud. So, um, so the, the, the AG initially said, we, we can't look into it again. Um, someone introduced an exception to a bill. It's on the Senate side, Jeb Bradley. Yeah. Um, it's on an election law bill. It seems like it's going to pass. Anyway, so it looks like there's going yeah, to be authorization in order to look into this so that we can get to the bottom of it. Frankly, for me, I'm like, it's the exact spread by which I lost. So yeah, I'm kind of curious. I only lost by like 60 or 70 votes. There, Who knows? You should have filed for a Well, recount. why would I? 60 or 70 votes are ridiculous. I would have filed at that. Any, I would, but, you know, maybe that's just me. Yeah, but you're in a bigger, much bigger district. 60 or 7 votes in a Senate district is much uh, different. I don't know, man. Based on the electioneering we saw at yeah. Ward 10. Uh, Anyways, you know, tell me anyway. about your bills. So basically, the one on Friday, which is House Bill 480, um, makes it so that ballots actually become public records. Yeah, they what should. does that mean? That means that they actually become subject to our right to know laws, right? So our 91A laws say that, you know, we have the right to know what our mm. government is up to. Of course, our New Hampshire Constitution, which provides way more protection than the legislature gives us. Oh, so we should think about that. You know, it says that government should be open, accessible, accountable, and responsive to the people. So this will be one of those ways. So basically what the bill says is it won't apply to absentee ballots because there's some extra stuff mm -hmm. and bells and whistles there. So that'll be interesting if the absentee ballots start to become more of a trend, mm. which I assume it's going to, you know why? Because that's where the election fraud takes place. So it makes perfect sense to me that people are gonna push for that more and more. Um, and you know, Tammy, honestly, the fact that people are like, oh, what? 
could elections possibly be fraudulent and iffy and sketchy? I'm like, anyone who (laughs) knows history knows that elections have always been rife with a lot of just rotten and corrupt and immoral behavior. So this one, I think, should pass. I'm hopeful. I'm actually going to testify on it. I already signed in on them. Then on Thursday, there's HB 406, Mm -hmm. and that hearing's at 215, and Right to Know is also supporting that bill. It also has to do with election law, but I didn't write a note here about what specifically Mm -hmm. it relates to, so I'm not 100% Hmm. sure, but people can go on Gen Court Mobile or, yeah, you know, it's really, it's really easy. Um, very you can look up, You've now. always been able to look up the language of a bill or everything. But if you find a bill that you do like, you know, if you look, go out and look up HB 480 on the general court website and you read the text of it and you think, oh, I, I, I think that's a good idea. Then you can click on, the easiest way I find is you click on, if it's a House bill, you click on House. If it's Senate bill, click on Senate. Um, and you click on the calendar and it bring, you can find it that way. Um, otherwise, you have to look at, a, at the other. I find it easier just to go. Yeah, calendar, then and you then look find at the, the committee. Yeah. You, you sign in as a, a member of the public. Yep. There's also, um, I believe it's today was a big Senate bill house. The Senate bill 130, which is the education yes. uh, savings account. Um, interesting, I'm going to tidbit because the, the House Bill 30, which was retained, everybody was outraged because usually... Usually, when a bill is retained in committee, it's the polite way to kill a bill. Yes. Or sometimes a committee just retains it. And I sat and had a beer with somebody on the education committee after last Thursday's session, and I said, that wasn't a kill the bill. And she said, oh, no, that was to hold on to. Because if the Senate bill, they'll do the work on the Senate side now, because now they know what the the hiccups are over here. So now they can fix them in the Senate side. But if for some reason the Senate bill gets its own problems and gets laid on the table or whatever, the House still has another bill in committee that could come back next year. So, so it's everyone, not always what playing, everybody thinks. Everyone's playing their game. Minutia. There's um, always minutia. You know, it's, it's the rules of the game. Yeah. I wish everyone would play a little cleaner. I yeah. wish we would all try and cooperate and write less bills and fix more yeah. problems. There but, was a bill, know, one of the bills I watched yes, the, that I was watching in Criminal Justice, on the surface, it was about... Not letting people who kill somebody because they're triggered because that person was gay or something shouldn't be an excuse for manslaughter. And I thought, do we really need to have excuse? Do we need to define what isn't an excuse for killing somebody? I don't think we need to go into those little pockets. So, and and that is part of my thing, right? Like, there's already bills for assault, yeah. for murder, yeah. for all these things. Like, we don't need to create all these different no. categories where people are like, what? If you assault someone, whether they're trans, cis, straight, right. gay, black, Whatever. white, it's still Asian, assault. purple, alien, Martian... <laughs> It doesn't matter. Assault is assault. We could just deal with these issues that way. Um, We're going to run out of time. We are. It goes so so fast. Check out my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist, on CarlaGarrick.com or also available on Amazon. If you've bought it, read it, please leave me a review, preferably five stars. And if you have any questions or any subject matter or whatever, um, you can always email us at manchtalk at gmail.com, and we do our best to keep on top of those. Um, That's all we got. Stay warm today. Stay cool tomorrow. And we'll be back next week this much closer to spring. Yay. Bye. Bye, guys.